In this video, we will show you how to replace your fuel injector on the Chevy Trailblazer. This will be located along the driver's side of your engine. There are six of these and the process is the same for all. Let's get into it. Okay friend, let's get started on our job. Make your way to your fuel cap and remove it from the vehicle. Now we can make our way under the hood. Now under the hood, we'll be looking for our negative battery terminal. Use an eight millimeter to loosen this and then separate it from the battery. Once this is making no contact, we'll continue towards the engine. We have our fuel line and that connects directly to the fuel rail. On top of the fuel rail in this area, there's a cover. Let's remove that. We'll give the cover a quick inspection, make sure it is still reusable. Now the next thing we're going to do is release fuel pressure from the system. So you want to be extremely careful doing this. In the center of this area, there's a small tab that you can press in on and that will release the pressure. It's a good idea to make sure you have a rag covering this area so you can collect that fluid and we'll try to dispose of it properly. There we go. Just got a little bit of fuel out of there. Typically I do cover it before I press it down, but I want you to see exactly what happens. We'll continue on with our cover. We don't want to lose that. Just place it right on here. Now that we've done that, let's make our way over to the other side of the engine. We're going to start disconnecting the air inlet from the plenum. You'll find that you have an eight millimeter headed clamp up along the top here. You can also use a flathead screwdriver if needed. We're going to loosen this just enough that we can slide this out of place. Now that we've done that, you'll find that you have a 10 millimeter headed mounting bolt straight down in this area. Remove that. A quick inspection of the mounting hardware as we remove it, replace everything as necessary. Now let's move on the other side of where that air in the tube would be. You'll find that you have a plastic clip holding this wiring harness in place. Use a small pick or a small screwdriver and gently separate this. Once you have that separated, make your way directly in front of that clip. You'll find that you have another 10 millimeter headed mounting bolt. Go ahead and remove that one as well. Now let's make our way to where this connects onto our throttle body. Directly in between these areas, you will find that you have another eight millimeter headed clamp. Once again, you could also use a flathead screwdriver if needed. Loosen that clamp. Now that that's nice and loose, let's take hold of this. We'll give it a wiggle and start sliding it away from the throttle body. Once we've done so, we can remove it from the engine compartment. Down along the bottom front, you also have this small hose. That should slide right onto the valve cover here. Comes up nice and easy. Let's remove this from the vehicle. Now let's make our way across here. We're going to disconnect this along the driver's side of this connector. You can press down on this little tab. We'll press it off. There's the little tab right there. A quick inspection. We can set this aside. Now we have two wiring harnesses to disconnect. Sometimes there will be a gray lock on these. This one's missing it, but typically for that, you just pull it out with a pick. In our case, we're going to squeeze on this little center tab here to unlock this and we'll pry it out of place. A quick check for corrosion as always. Move along to this one. Lift up on the locking tab for this and we'll slide that out. Once again, a quick check for corrosion. That looks good as well. Now that we have the wiring harnesses disconnected, let's start removing the throttle body from the intake. You'll find that you have four 10 millimeter headed bolts holding this in place. Remove the throttle body, we'll give it a quick inspection. We can set this aside. Let's move along to our map sensor. You'll find that you have two locking tabs, one on each side. Go ahead and depress those and carefully pull this out of place. Just 
one side. Let's give that a quick inspection. We can set this aside. We'll move just underneath the map sensor and remove this vacuum hose, which leads all the way over to the vacuum booster. To do this, squeeze the clamp, and then we'll slide this off of the air intake. We'll just give that a quick check, make sure it doesn't look like it's cracked or damaged in any way, and we can set this vacuum line aside. Now we're going to continue on up in this area. We're not going to disconnect any of the wiring harnesses from this unit, but we will dislodge it from its mounting bracket. Up along the top, there's three ears that you'll gently start lifting up and away. As you do so, we'll start pulling this away to unlock it. Now we can roll this out of place along the bottom. If you were to look just below that, you're going to find that your wires are connected into this bracket. We'll just gently pry those out of place. You can use a trim tool to remove the entire clip or just use your pick to dislodge the wiring harness from the clip. Whatever works best for you. Just make our way in between here, pry this out of place. The other one's located a little bit further rearward. Now the next thing we're going to do is start removing this entire bracket. To remove this, what we're going to have to do is remove three 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts and two 10 millimeter headed mounting nuts. You'll find that you have two bolts and two nuts pretty much out in the open up here. The last bolt is all the way down underneath this bracket. It's a little bit hard to get to, so that'll be the first one that we attempt. Got my little quarter inch ratchet. I'm gonna come along the back side here. We'll see if we can get this out. There's that one. Let's continue up in this area. We have our two 10 millimeter headed mounting nuts, and then just above those, two more 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts. first. We can remove this plastic portion. Reach in here, we can grab onto this metal bracket as well. We'll slide that out of the way. That's where that bolt was located. Now with that bracket out of the way, we'll continue on with a small angled pick. We're going to dislodge this wiring harness from its mounting point. Just get underneath that. You can also use a small pocket screwdriver, whatever works best for you. There we are. Now we can continue on with removing our 10, 10 millimeter headed bolts that are holding the intake to the engine. You'll find that they make their way all the way across down along this area. Some of them will be a little bit harder to get to than others. To get the forward bolt, it will be easiest if you use a wobble extension. You want that socket to be able to move around and pivot as needed. Here we are. We'll leave that bolt right in there for now. Now that I have the forward mounting bolt loose, I'm going to continue to the next hardest bolt, which is all the way on the back side. With both of the hardest bolts out of place, we'll continue on to all of the rest. Now we can carefully start pulling this out of place. Let's set the intake aside for now. With the intake out of the way, we're going to disconnect this wiring harness, which will lead down to each one of our fuel injectors. To remove this, we want to disengage the gray lock and then squeeze on that center tab. Once we have that squeezed in, we can separate the two pieces. A quick check for corrosion. 
Once you have the wiring disconnected, we'll move along to removing the wire connector from the top of the valve cover. Just use a trim tool for this or a small prying device. Set that aside. Let's continue on to loosening our four 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts that hold the fuel rail down to the engine. Now that we have all those loose, we'll continue on with some masking tape. Underneath that fuel rail is where the ports are that go into your engine. We want to make sure we cover them so no dirt or debris makes its way into the engine causing any internal engine damage. Now we'll be using compressed air in this area because as we start lifting the fuel rail up and out, the fuel injectors will come out as well and we don't want any debris making its way into the engine. At this point, we can start dislodging this from the engine. You can use a long screwdriver, pry bar, whatever you happen to have, to gently make your way in between the valve cover and the fuel rail itself. We'll just start gently prying this away, making our way down the line. There is six fuel injectors on this fuel rail. There we go, starting to come out. We can take our time on this. We don't want to break anything, obviously. Now we can take hold of that fuel rail. We'll start pulling it away from the engine. Keep in mind, there could be a little bit of fuel still left in this area. With this in this position, we can continue on to removing the fuel injectors. The process for one is the exact same thing for every one of them. Now at this point, since I'm only replacing one of the fuel injectors, the next thing that I'll do is continue on to cleaning and inspecting each and every other one of them. I want to ensure that they're still in good, usable condition. If it looks like they're damaged in any way, now's the perfect time to replace it. We'll check those O-rings. That's this orange circle that goes around. These all look pretty good, actually. Looking at each one of the fuel injectors, you're going to find that you have a green locking tab that you will have to slowly pull out of place. We don't want to break it. Once you have that pulled out of place right inside this area, there's going to be a small press tab. You can press that in and we'll gently pull this off of the fuel injector. We don't want to damage this electrical connector or the wiring harness in any way. There we are. If pressing in the center here does not work right for you, but you do have it unlocked with this green tab, we'll make our way along the far side here. Just gently make your way in between the fuel injector and the locking tab and pry that locking tab away from the fuel injector. I'll show you that right now. Right here's the tab. I made my way in between the injector and the tab and just gently pried it away. A quick check for corrosion and we can set this little wiring harness aside. Now we can start removing the fuel injector from the fuel rail. This is going to have a clip that makes its way three quarters of the way around the fuel rail, holding the fuel injector to the fuel rail itself. This is the open side. We'll turn it over a little bit. And now you can see the closed side. We'll make our way under here and start prying this up a little bit. Careful not to let this go flying. You do need to reuse it. There's that locking clip. Take hold of the fuel injector while you're holding the fuel rail and separate the two pieces. Once again, there could still be fuel in this area. Just wiggle it around. And there it is, friend. All right, let's get ready to install our brand new fuel injector. Make sure you have it in the proper positioning. You can just compare it to the originals. We'll press this in. 
Put a little wiggle here. We're just trying to slide that O-ring into place. Double check to make sure you did not peen over the O-ring. It's not damaged in any way. It should have slid right in there. We'll make sure the connector is facing the proper way and then install our locking clip. This will spread a little bit as we pull it around the fuel injector and fuel rail. You can use a pocket screwdriver or pick to help it along. Now we'll just double check all the way around to make sure the fuel injector is completely seated and locked into position. You do not want to leak in this area. Reconnect your electrical connector. We'll press that in, listen for a click, give it a little wiggle and lock it in. One last tug on that fuel injector connector. We want to double check to make sure it is connected properly. At this point, like I said before, the process for one is the same for each and every one. After you've done that, you can continue. Once you've installed all of your fuel injectors into the fuel rail, we'll continue on with a vacuum to try to clean out any of the debris from inside of the fuel injector ports. Once you have those ports clean, the next thing we'll do is lubricate the O-rings that are located on the end of each one of the fuel injectors. We'll use some clean motor oil for this. Just a tiny drip on your finger will do. All right. Now we can prepare to slide this into the ports in the engine. Let's bring this down in here. Before you press it in completely, it's important to double check to make sure each and every one of the fuel injectors is lined up properly. If one of them is misaligned, you could potentially cause some serious damage. Once you're sure they look good, let's continue on to pressing this into the engine diagonally. If you need to give it a light bonk with a rubber mallet, you can do so, or just use your palm. Don't hurt yourself. Let's continue on with our four fuel rail bolts. You'll find that I used a tiny bit of blue thread locker on the very first threads of the bolt. You don't need very much, just a little dab will do on each bolt. Never use red thread locker in this application. We'll start all of these in by hand so we're sure we are not cross threading these into the engine. Once you have them started in, you can snug them up and then torque each one of them to 89 inch pounds. We'll just double check that torque. We do not want this fuel rail loosening up on us while we're driving down the road. Let's move up along the top of the valve cover. We're going to reconnect our fuel injector wiring harness. We'll press this together, listen for a click, and lock it in with the gray locking tab. A little click there. Try to separate it. Lock it in. One last check just to make sure that that is secured together as it needs to be. And then continue on to securing it to your valve cover. Start removing the tape from this area. With that out of the way, the next thing you want to do is clean and inspect the mounting area where your intake manifold will go. Ours already looks like it's been cleaned and sanded down pretty well. We'll just give it a quick wipe with a rag that has some parts cleaner on it, and then we'll continue on with our installation. If you did find that there was some raised areas on this, you would want to make sure that you use a sanding block with some very fine sandpaper. We don't want to mar anything up. You just want to try to remove any of the discrepancies. One last quick check and we'll continue on with our intake. Before we put this in place up against the engine, it's important to make sure that you clean and inspect your gaskets. Make sure they're all soft and pliable and they're not torn, worn, cracked, or damaged in any way. You have all of the ports that go across the bottom 
And then you will also have the circular port along the top for your throttle body. Each one of these needs to be soft and pliable. That feels good. Let's turn this over and we'll have a quick look at all of our bolt holes. Now some intake manifolds will have markings on them telling you which sequence to torque these in. This one right here says the lower center bolt is number one, just above it is number two. Once you've completed those two, you'll start making your way out. Number three is this one making its way rearward and then we'll go forward from the center bolts. After that, we have number five and six over here, seven and eight, nine on the far rear bolt, and our last bolt is going to be the hardest, number 10, just behind that alternator along the front. Start putting this in position. Bring it down in here carefully. We don't want to damage our seals. It's a little hard getting the first couple bolts started in, but generally once you have that first two in, the rest of it should be a little easier. Now you do not want to tighten any of these until you have each and every one of your mounting bolts started in. Now that we have them all started in, let's continue on by snugging them and torquing them in a very specific sequence, which I already talked to you about. We'll be starting in the center on the bottom, make our way just above it. Let's get the third one back here, one. forward. As we move forward, we'll be doing the top bolt. Now we'll do the one just below it. All right, we're going to go for bolts number seven and eight. We'll be moving rearward to the two that are just in front of the far rear bolt. Bolt number seven is the bottom one there. The eighth bolt is just above that one. Ninth bolt is the far rear bolt. There's that one. Now we can get the far forward bolt. Let's get that last bolt up here. This one's the hardest one. There's that one. Now we can start installing our brackets. We have the metal one, which will go on first. On the lower side here, we have that small hole that is supposed to go up against the intake. It's gonna go right up in here. So what we'll do is we'll take this and we'll start putting it in place. This will slide over the lower studs on the intake here, and we'll align that lower bolt hole. Now at this point, we'll pause along the top and continue down at the bottom. We've got our one 10 millimeter headed bolt that will screw directly into the plastic intake. You want to make sure it's snug, but you don't want to over tighten it because we don't want to break anything. Right there feels as though it's bottomed out. Just make sure that's snug. Moving along from the lower part of the bracket, let's resecure the wiring harness. That's right in place. Squeeze that together, listen for a click, give it a tug to make sure it's completely secure. Perfect. Let's get this plastic bracket on here. Along the bottom, we're sliding it onto the lower studs. We'll start on the 10 millimeter headed mounting nuts. I don't need to tighten these yet. Now that both of those are started, we'll continue on with the two upper 10 millimeter headed bolts. Once again, starting them in by hand. Once everything's started, you can go ahead and snug it up.
Now we can take hold of the computer here. We're going to reattach the wiring harnesses to the bracket here. To do this, we'll just align them with the mounting holes and try to press them in. At this point, we'll take the computer, rest it in the bottom of this plastic bracket, and then we'll swing the upper portion into the top portion of the bracket. Should fit right in there. Double check to make sure that's locked in completely. Now it's time to carefully reinstall the vacuum hose that leads to the vacuum booster for the brakes. We'll be taking this, squeezing the clamp, and sliding it onto the intake. You want to be careful not to break the intake or the hose doing so. As you can see, I press the hose as far as I can near that intake. Now we'll bring the clamp down. We try to put it into the original position. You definitely want to make sure you have hose on both sides of the clamp itself. If it's off the very tip of the hose, it could potentially slide off. That's dangerous. Now it's time for the map sensor. Let's take this and put it in position. We have our two locking clips. We'll align those with their corresponding holes and slide this down. Listen for a click from both sides, give it a little wiggle. It should be able to move around a tiny bit, but it shouldn't be able to lift up and out. Now it's time for the throttle body. Let's get this in position. Start in all four of your 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts, snug them up, and then we'll torque each of these to 89 inch pounds. Let's reconnect this. Press it in, listen for our click, give it a little tug. Should be able to slide back and forth, but definitely not be able to pull off of there. Time for some wiring harnesses. We'll reconnect the one for the throttle body, that's the larger of the two. As I mentioned before, there should be a gray locking piece on this. Once you have it pressed in, you want to take that gray lock and press it into this area. That'll hold it in the lock position. Ours is missing. Press it in, listen for a click. Go ahead and give it a light tug. We don't want to damage anything, but we do want to make sure it's secure. Map sensor wiring harness. This one you just want to hold onto the map sensor and press this in so you don't cause any damage. Light wiggle. Perfect. Now we can put on our upper plastic plenum. We have this area that will go up against the throttle body. We'll be sliding this over. But as we bring it down, we also want to pay attention to our breather hose. That'll slide down on top of the valve cover. Once we have all that together, we'll also be continuing on to putting this in position as well. That's going to go right over this area. I'm double checking to make sure that my breather hose is secured before I continue too much further because you may have to lift it back up. Pressing it onto the throttle body as far as possible. Once again, paying attention to the breather hose. We don't want to leak here. Time for the air inlet. Now we need to tighten each of our two clamps. There's one on each side of this plastic plenum. Right there is where it feels like it bottomed out. We're only going to take it a little bit further. You do not want to strip this out. If it feels like it jumps one tooth, you have to replace the clamp. Take hold of that and give it a wiggle. The next clamp is in between the throttle body and the plastic plenum here. It looks the same as the other. Along the passenger side of that plenum, we have our two 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts. While we're back here, we can also secure the wiring harness. We'll put it inside of its plastic clip, lock it down. Let's make our way back to the fuel cap. Install that now. Let's make our way back under the hood. We're going to reconnect the negative battery terminal. Of course, we'll start this in by hand, and then we can snug it up. Right there is bottomed out. 
make sure it's nice and tight. All right, friends, we showed you how to replace the fuel injector on your vehicle. At this point, you want to continue into the passenger compartment. Start up the vehicle. You might find that you have a long crank. Once it's started, make your way back out here and double check to make sure you don't have any fuel leaks. Once you're back in the passenger compartment, make sure you don't have a check engine light and take your vehicle for a road test. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.